Okay, this is why you guys didn't hear me last time because there are two mics and I used only one. One was a recording mic. Okay. So hopefully you'll be able to hear me. But you were so polite last time and you signed the register, I think that's good enough. <laughs> okay. So thing is to keep this thing meaningful and to keep it interesting and to reward you for having come so early in the morning, either it's 8.30 or 9.30 or whatever it is, right? And at the end of this course, there should be a distinct behavioral change. Hopefully, it's for the better. So, I'll just talk to you for about five to 10 minutes now, just, just going over the points which I've told you in a systematic way. Then I would like you to come here in front and then uh, uh, present yourselves. And then uh, next week, I'm planning that uh, uh, Professor Apte will take up um, a session. For next week's session only, as an experiment, we'll split up the class into two groups. One group will come on uh, Tuesday, and the other group will come on Thursday. We want to experiment how we can work with a smaller group, right? And what we'd like to do is to ensure that at the moment, you guys are doing a seminar, right? Everybody is doing a seminar, OK? So whatever inputs we give you, you should be directly able to apply in your uh, seminar, right? And take it through into MTech and beyond that, okay? So the guests we hope to have on the, on the course, one is Prakash Apte, a very interesting guy from Double E. He teaches the innovation methodology called TRIZ, right? He does a lot of work with uh, companies like Mahindra and Mahindra, the tractor division and stuff like that, and uh, innovation related. And uh, he'll come and address you about uh, some very interesting things uh, next week, okay? How to, how to map out a problem? Like for instance, all of you guys are doing a seminar at the moment, right? How to start working towards the seminar? How to start asking the right questions? What is the language in which to ask the right questions? Because if you don't ask the question in the right way, right, you don't, you are not asking the right questions which will lead you to some uh, fruitful result at the end. So that's very important. Prakash Vedya is going to teach you about proofreading, right? Proofreading, how do you correct uh, documents and the language of proofreading, right? So there we'll have you all at once, right? All will have to come on the Tuesday class and all will have to come on uh, Thursday class. He needs to have two hours with you, right? Samir Sahasrabuddha is going to teach you the language of visual communication, how to use graphics, how not to use graphics, the, the science and the technology and the art of fonts, of color, how to use color, not to use color, all these kind of things. And hopefully at a later stage, if you want it, we'll give you a module on, on how to produce a small video, right? The language of video, because increasingly you folks, as you go out, will need to present your thoughts, not only in a static medium like a PowerPoint, but you might want to commission a video. So how to commission or how to actually design a good video, okay? Anand Deshpande is a good friend. He's the managing director, as you know, of uh, PSPL, uh, Persistent Systems. He's an old uh, friend of the department. And when it comes to communication skills, he gets a lot of guys from here. So he should tell you about the relevance and the importance and aspects of communication skills, right, that, 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 uh, that he finds important. And to become, an industry leader like he is, you need a large amount of communication skills, right? Because it's not only about being a techie, about knowing, knowing what you are, uh, the area that you're working in is taken for granted. You have to go beyond that, right? right? So these are the slots we have and these are your uh, TAs. Ankit is here, Avi is here, Piyush is also here. Lohit I don't see, maybe he'll be along in a moment. He's got a class, right? He'll come, okay. So. Communication aspects, how you communicate with yourself, nobody thinks about that, but that's also very important. With others, through letters, through your research, through proposals, right, through products. We are writing a large uh, proposal at the moment for, uh, for MHRD, right? And uh, the way we present our arguments is going to determine whether we get the money or not. And that to how much money we get. All these kind of things are very important. So you have to think about what the people who are sponsoring your research actually have in their mind. You should always think about what the object of communication has in their mind, right? When you pitch your communication or you pitch your story, right? More and more as you, as you go along, you realize that a lot of life is about storytelling. 
a lot of life is about storytelling. I am standing here and telling you a story to convince you to our point of view. In your seminar, you are telling a story, right? A story of technology, right? This, 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 this is the problem that we need to solve. This is the work which has been done in the past. It's been done this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. And out of all these stories, I think the most convincing story is this story. And I'll explain why. And then you develop that story into what will become essentially the seed of your master's project, where you will take the story of a certain relevant problem and start solving it to come up with an innovative answer which nobody else has thought of. And if nobody else has thought of that, it turns into a paper in a good quality journal. Right? So, there it is. Communication as a tool of thought. How many of you have read uh, George Orwell in this class? George Orwell. Okay. You should read 1984, Animal Farm and all these things. He's, he's, he's a great believer in this, that thought affects language and, long, and language also affects thought. Right? If you are sloppy in your use of language, your thoughts are also very sloppy, your arguments are very sloppy. Right? I'll develop this, this thinking, why is it important to correct your spoken and written communication? Why is it important to correct your spoken and written communication? You will believe that the facts that I'm writing are important. They should be correct. I don't need to have right language. I don't need to sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, have the right kind of emphasis and so on. As long as the facts are correct, that's good enough. Absolutely not. What, what we notice, our experience is, when we allow errors to creep in to our story, right? When we allow errors to creep into our story, all kinds of other errors will creep in, including mistakes in reasoning. Including mistakes in reasoning. That is why it's very important to get your language correct. Sloppy language is absolutely unexcusable. It doesn't mean that you solve it by cut paste. That's not the answer. You have to make your mistakes, be corrected and learn. Okay. Sloppiness of language indicates sloppiness of thought. You'll notice all the great scientists and engineers are very, very precise in their use of language, nuanced in their use of language. This is something which you might not have been exposed to in the past, which now you have to, you have to acquire these skills. Okay. And why is it painful? I know after having read so many seminar reports and presentations and, and MTPs and stuff like that, you know, you might say that, okay, fine, these are small errors and so on. It doesn't really matter. Okay, but when you see an error, you have a reaction to it, right? First of all, what it happens is that you have limited time. You are trying to get, get five uh, reports read or five theses read and stuff like that. And any error slows down the speed at which you can do your job with the result that you get irritated. And when you get irritated, you tend to kind of take it out on that person who's written the report, right? You'll get a bad grade. You'll get a bad grade for bad presentation of your ideas, right? But if, if the language at least flows smoothly, no, no errors and stuff like that, no spelling mistakes, the grammar is decent, presentation is decent and uh, so on, fonts chosen are readable, right? And you're not wasting too much paper and you're not using very verbose statements. If you make it easier for us, right, it makes it easier to understand what you have in mind. And it shows that you've thought through what you have in mind. Sloppy language shows that you've not really looked at what you've written. And it makes us angry. Right? And once you've made us angry, that's it. Right? You lost your opportunity to, to communicate your story to us. Okay? So well written means that we will breeze through and we'll maybe think it's good. It might not be as good, right? But we, we get the impression that it's good. Okay? So keep these things in mind. So one of the big problems of modern communication, unfortunately, is speed, right? In the old days, as uh, Prakash, uh, 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 by the way, I will uh, share with you, writing a letter or publishing a document was a big, heavy work. You know, you had these lead types. You had to compose them on a big, big uh, board like this and individually put each letter there, right? And why is it uppercase and lowercase? Anybody know that? Why is it called uppercase and why is it called lowercase? What's upper and lower about it? Anybody know that? The compositor, when he was having this thing, 
right? Most of the small letters used to be frequently used and they were kept in little uh, pigeonholes in front here. Most of the capital letters, because they were not as frequently used, were kept here in front. So that was upper case and that was lower case when they are composing the fonts and then they put this together, tie it with rubber band or string or whatever it is, put some ink, put a paper on it and get the impression. That's how, that's where all this language comes from. It's very interesting if you look at it, okay. Apart from this course, I'd like you to go away and do some things, spend time reading novels. When I was doing my masters, I remember, right, way back in Oxford, I discovered writers like Jane Austen and Charles Dickens and stuff like that. Every week I used to devour at least one novel. Maybe it's had some effect somewhere. Read things like George Orwell, John Steinbeck, Gerald Durrell, To Kill a Mockingbird, Harper Lee, Roald Dahl if you like it, Shakespeare, Niraj Choudhury, the writer. How many of you have heard of him? Autobiography of an unknown Indian, right? He used to be our neighbor. We used to spend a lot of time with him. And he used to believe that Shakespeare teaches you the rhythm of the English language, right? Shakespeare teaches you the rhythm of the English language. Every language has a rhythm of its own, which you need. It's nice to respect, right? And also there are flavors of English. Now English has been adopted by everybody. So you have a Hindi rhythm and you have a Telugu rhythm and you have a, you know, Punjabi rhythm and stuff like that. But you should also know what the English original rhythm is and reference to uh, Shakespeare gives you that. How many have encountered Shakespeare at school, for instance? Okay, barely about three, four hands. Yeah, okay. So it's worth reading and it's worth appreciating. Maybe you've not appreciated it because it's not been taught right, but it's worth appreciating. Great cinema. How many of you have seen 12 Angry Men? <coughs> it's there on all the servers, right? Okay, 12 Angry Men, worth seeing and that's a classic example of communication, right? How an entire jury believes that the man is a convict and he should be convicted and hanged to death, right? And how one man slowly, 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 right, brings everybody around to his way of thinking. That's a classic in communication, right? To Kill a Mockingbird, a Gregory Peck film and there, and there are others, right, which we can uh, share with you. And uh, communication. Right? See it as storytelling in its various ways. You are telling a story in your seminar report, you are telling a story in your MTech thesis. So it's, it, the, the, the onus is on you guys for keeping the story interesting. Right? If I'm if you are, if I'm having the privilege of having everybody invest their time in what I'm going to say, then what I'm saying better be interesting. Right? So that's, that's what you should keep in mind anytime you do anything or create a report, a presentation or whatever it is. Yeah? You're not there to reflect your own brilliance basically. You're there to engage the audience. So typically what happens is that you get lost in kind of technical buzzwords and stuff like that. You know, the point is not to help the other person understand. The point is to blind them with your science and your brilliance, you know, with the result that it creates a resistance and an irritation in the audience, whoever it is. And we want to talk as we go along. Uh, so anyway, these are the stages that we want to help you with, okay. Your MTech uh, seminar which is how you explore the problem back background and uh, the setting, how do you articulate the problem, so that's what we'll discover next week, how by the use of the correct language or in describing the problem properly, you can actually make it easier to solve it, which is what mathematicians do. Mathematician, they take a description, an English language description of a problem, represent it as symbols and the symbols subscribe to certain rules with the result of which they can solve that problem. Now if you, if you express that problem in a very poorly thought out metaphor or manner, it makes it much more difficult to solve that problem. So the kind of way you articulate the problem, the words that you use, the verbs that you use are very important. And Prakash Apte will, will discuss that uh, next week. MTech project, how do you conceptualize alternative solutions? How do you experiment with the solutions, right? Make mistakes and correct them. It's an iterative process, writing up. Most people believe that an MTech project is written up right at the end. 
I would say no. I would say that you should iterate on the theme of your project at least two or three times before you've reached the end. That means if, if you have about a year to do it, within three months you should have an initial answer, start writing it up. And you'll find it's very interesting. Once you write up a thought, you actually begin to understand the thought. When you try and tell your story in your report, you actually understand the problem better and then you find all sorts of new ideas come out of it. So don't, for God's sake, leave report writing till the end of the project. It's not, it's not a one-shot process. You should start writing the report as early as possible. And keep in mind, your MTech project contents need to, needs to be iterated at least two or three times for you to really get into the material. Anybody knows, any software guy knows, that after he's written the program, what happens? Testing. That's the mistake. After you've written the program, you actually understand what the problem was in the first place. Then you rewrite the program. <laughs> right? Testing and all that brings out all the problems. You're right. Okay. Testing brings out the problems. But it's only after you've written the program that you actually understood the problem in the first place. So most people don't leave enough space for that. They get busy with other work and other assignments and other deadlines and so on. And the MTP gets on getting pushed, 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 pushed. Because it's, it's not got a weekly kind of deadline unless your, your advisor is demanding that he meets you every week. Right? Only then, just before the deadline, you go away and do some work to show him, sir, I've done this. Right? That shouldn't be the way to do it. Ideally, you should be working steadily. I know it's very difficult. This is all theory. But I'm saying that to help you and to help the thing that you're trying to do. You learn a lot if you work regularly and kind of give yourself enough time. And after this, once you've gone out, right? Use what you acquire to achieve your mission. Right? Now, what is that? I think university is a great place to identify what your mission in life is. Right? Some, I, I, well, have a job with Google, have a job with Cisco, whatever. That's not a mission. Right? What happens typically? You get the job in Cisco, then you get bored. You get a job with Google, but they keep you engaged and kind of keep you busy and so on. Do you have a larger goal in life that you want to achieve? As an IIT M-Tech, you have the potential for making much, much bigger uh, waves outside than you believe. As an IIT M-Tech, you have the potential for being a leader in the sense that if you stepped into the, into the shoes of a leader, people will accept leadership much more easily from you because they'll believe that what you're saying is relevant. right? So just taking up a job and depriving some other poor sort of a job is not ideally what I feel an IIT M-Tech should do. Unless you can become a very good researcher or a teacher or a kind of uh, industry leader doing a startup, running a business, employing other M-Techs from other uh, places. That makes sense for what an IIT M-Tech should aspire to. So keep in mind, we, we don't aspire to just have you guys go and take up techie jobs with Google and stuff like that, make lots of money and that's the end of the story. Most of us here are at IIT rather than any other institution in the world because we feel that we can create some kind of impact here by having influence. I spent a year in industry, right, as a chief technology officer of Mahindra and Mahindra. I was reporting to Anand Mahindra. This was 2007, right? And I discovered something which was totally unexpected. I discovered that industry, at least certain industries in India, believe they are victims victims of public policy, victims of government policy, victims of the marketplace, victims of shareholders, right? Constantly they are running to meet deadlines which are about three months, the quarterly review. They don't realize that with the size that they have, they are a big giant, they can actually move the market. They can actually create new products. It requires a bit more risk-taking ability, right? But that's the kind of thing I saw. And then I found that here, by being back at IIT, Right? One can have a much bigger impact. As faculty, I can go and make some uh, pollution uh, rating for cars, let's say. Right? The government will listen to me. And then all the industry will tow our line. Just by making this thing, by drumming up and putting a pollution rating of a vehicle, right? rope in the government, make them put in place a mechanism that all cars will have a pollution rating, and then see how industry behaves. So being here, you can be a kind of dada like this. You can actually make differences. You can make things happen. So I feel that you should think about what your mission is.
so everything should be geared up towards that and not just taking a job so this is the rough schedule that you will be uh, following in our uh, semester scientific method which is next week right so what we propose to do only for next week is an experiment is split you up into two lots the first lot roll number is 1 to 54 right will come on tuesday right and uh, the rest will come on uh, thursday as an experiment to start with we'll try and be fair and kind of move these things around then after that is listening and note taking reading dictionary and grammar skills you know this and reading uh, scientific articles formal writing technical writing of abstracts reports speaking skills i think this is post mid sem so what my plan is that we will stick with the usual curriculum until mid sem and then after mid sem we'll start improvising and kind of doing other interesting things also okay to complement that speaking skills oral presentation non verbal communication ethics and all that kind of uh, things right so what i'm hoping today is that you tell us your wish list as to what you would like in the post mid sem kind of sessions right so it gives us time now to plan for those things right so you can pull out any rabbit from your hat and we'll try and respect it okay don't just say i want to learn communication skills because i mean you'll be learning that anyway right so possible wish list you might ask for things like i want to know more about the psychology of communication right what underlies communication the principles right there are some very interesting books like thinking fast and thinking slow by kanman how many have read this incidentally nobody okay how many friends do you need is another book very interesting it says that gossiping has got a tremendous value you should gossip <laughs> right and uh, this book explains in an entire book as to why gossiping is good for you right so we'll explore that different ways of expression okay how other people express themselves how a storyteller will express himself how a filmmaker will express himself how a graphic designer expresses how an artist expresses right we can get friends from outside to come and talk to you about how they do their thing i'd like you to meet filmmakers and artists and if you're interested if you think all i want to know is write a paper then we we'll do that also not an issue right but i feel again this should be engaging it should be interactive it should be you know uh, discussions communication skills how do you manage communication in a group project how to criticize you know the project leader has got is he, he's got it totally wrong how do you convince him or her to your way of thinking right in a way that doesn't hurt them because if it hurts them they're not going to do it right or if it hurts them they'll become useless because they say i'm not doing it now you do it right how to criticize people this is very important right you as a you are bad it doesn't really help because that person gets i'm bad you are bad right that's how it becomes right and then the, you'll come up with all sorts of arguments right the other way to do it is look you're a great guy but if you did this better we would be so much happier with you right and everybody would be able to understand what you're saying and so on that's another way to criticize right so criticizing most of our life goes in that and suffering from the consequences of doing it wrong i mean we just have to look at our parents to see how people do it wrong right they're so anxious that they don't think about communication they just tell you what's on their mind and then it just creates the opposite action on you right so you need to get smart about these things how to ask questions that other people don't like okay we'll come into these things and we want to end up with exercises that we can implement right small small exercises like one student uh, told me that if someone asks you to do uh, something you ask anything else i can do for you right and then it has a very good consequence a very good friend who was a big hot shot in mckinsey's he was the head of the it practice in the us right told me one thing he learned in business school so at at mckinsey also if you ask him how can i solve this problem he has no idea but he says that there are three ways to solve this problem right when he said that there are three ways to solve the problem and he knows only one by the time he's finished explaining one way he's thought of two other ways of doing it and it works right it works you can try it sometime okay and then you sound very bright and intelligent and stuff like that you know okay 
So today what we'll do is that, no, we won't make groups of up to uh, five. We won't go into a, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd thought of that originally. So all I want you to do is, I still want it to be individual because we want to have you on record, right? So we can have a before and after kind of series afterwards, <laughs> okay? What we'd like to you to do is individually just come up, right? Name, where you come from, the faculty you're working with in your uh, seminar, one communication disaster and one communication success and maybe some wish list that you want from this course. And I'm sure many of you in your nervousness when you stand in front of the camera won't remember uh, the, these things. You'll think of just one point to say. That's also okay, right? But keep it to within 20 seconds and we can cover the class. Now see that there are so many people. Don't tell them a boring story, right? Don't bore us if possible. Make it interesting. You have 20 seconds of limelight, right? To, to, to tell us something interesting, right? Either communication disaster, success, or what you want from this course, which I have not mentioned already, right? So then we will take this in, and then I'll, I'll figure out sort of your names and uh, stuff like this, and then we'll try and make this course more meaningful, okay? So um, who didn't we cover last time? Or should we just go randomly and say, Lauren, you come, or Amandeep, is he here or is he bunked? Okay, he's here. Okay, you come or whatever. So we'll take it. Uh, what you say is very important because they will take copious notes afterwards. The video doesn't work. The video is there. The recording is there. I hope you are good, right? So we'll take feedback from you guys and uh, figure out what all we can mix into the the dish that we are making called communication skills to make it meaningful and interesting. Okay. Who's next? Where were you last time? Row number two or three? Hello, I am Ankit Gupta. I am from Nagpur and uh, I am doing my seminar under Professor Sanyal. One of the successful communication which I with one of the successful successful communication which I had was uh, the B Tech seminar, uh, B Tech uh, project uh, report and the presentation, uh, which went quite uh, well. And uh, communication disaster uh, was uh, uh, when I, uh, there was a junior who to whom uh, I was uh, I taught a topic, and after giving lecture one hour, he said I didn't understand anything. So that was one of the communication disaster which I think. And for my wish list, uh, I would like to know how to tackle audience of different sizes and and uh, how to uh, communicate in that sense. Thank you. Hello, uh, myself Amol Wangdia. I am from Pune. Uh, I am uh, working under the guidance of Sudarshan sir. Uh, the example of uh, great communication was uh, the first day at Persistent where I joined uh, as a fresher. Initially I didn't want to join the company because I didn't get the job wi what I wanted. But uh, Anand Deshpande is a great speaker. He convinced me uh, and that that's what motivated me. Uh, moti uh, I mean he convinced the whole audience and that's what motivated me to continue the job and disaster was uh, the uh, KTs which I gave in the company and I had to give thrice to understand the, uh, the audience uh, or the uh, team members. So what I want to learn from this course is uh, to make good presentations, use of images or uh, the fonts which can improve presentation. <coughs> Hello, I am Avantika. I am from Vrindavan. Uh, I am doing my seminar under uh, Professor Uday Khedkar. And uh, my communication disaster was once in a debate, I got completely blank. And for like two minutes, I was not saying anything. So somehow I completed it. And uh, communication success was my job interview in the BTEC. I was like really appreciated. From this course, uh, I expect that uh, I get rid of my communication fears. 
so like a stage fear so i want to get more chances of speaking in front of the crowd thank you uh, hello i'm shruti sharma i'm from bhopal madhya pradesh i'm doing my seminar under professor rk joshi um my communication disaster one of my communication disaster was my btech uh, major uh, project report and uh, in which we just because we wrote it at the last time the uh, technical report we put forth wasn't very good and ha i have had many examples of good communication but not a great one and what i expect from this uh, hs 699 course is that after communicating with people i should be able to analyze it and better myself each time hello uh, myself pushkar khadilkar i am from pune and i am doing my seminar under professor sudarshan uh, one of the good examples of communication that i had was uh, we had to do weekly client calls uh, in our company and after some time our my manager got so comfortable that he led the entire handling of client calls to me and i cannot think of great communication disaster <laughs> so far and what i expect from this course is to better report writing skill and presentation skill thank you hello i am sandeep gar uh, i am from morena i have only communication disaster that i got the uh, topic under professor nl sarda so he told me the topic that your topic is city gml something like that so i understood that it, he is asking for my city so i told him i am from morena <laughs> uh my business from this course is that i want to get rid of my fear and friend uh, renting myself on this test thank you i am deepak agrawal i come from shri gangandagar rajasthan and uh, one of the communication disaster i had uh, once i was giving a speech on teachers day and uh, i just uh, i didn't communicate with audience i didn't even look uh, to the audience and i just read what i had written previously when i completed my presentation then i saw that everyone was laughing at me <laughs> and uh, the only successful presentation i gave was the aka presentation in the last sem <laughs> hello everyone myself minakshi verma i am from bhopal madhya pradesh my communication success was project vivas in earlier semesters and my communication disaster has been many so i can't mention it here i have took this course to influence to learn how to influence a large number of audience thank you once i went to a coaching class to teach students but i they didn't understand anything what i taught from last one hour that was one of the disaster hello i am santosh patel i am from manwat maharashtra i have i have came across only communication disasters never, never any 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 success apart from this once once in during my campus campus interview placement that day i have never i have never came across english and even now and that day, those day also i was very frightened when when it whenever it, it comes to english and during during my interview the, the hr hr asked me questions and i was like my my legs were shaking and really even now those are <laughs> and I, i was unable to utter even single word in english so after that she asked me the questions in hindi and i have went thank you hi i'm abhirat i'm from mumbai uh, i've i've had a lot of communication disasters pretty much every time i step up to speak in front of an audience i forget everything i have to say uh, i've not had any communication success as you say uh, wish list for this course i would like to have some debates where uh, you know a formal argument of sorts so that we are thinking quickly and speaking thank you i am amandeep um, i come from chandigarh i am working under professor kriti uh, mostly my disasters are when i tend to be over smart uh, <laughs> and uh, an example of great communication is what i recall from the first day of this course when uh, professor sethi made us comfortable and almost made us believe that this is what we are here for and i would uh, wish that uh, i i behave naturally when i am on stage irrespective of uh, the size of the audience thank you 
Hello, uh, I'm Manjuna Tiaji. I'm from Bangalore. Uh, an example of my, I mean, have met, have had many communication disasters. Uh, one embarrassing situation I'd like to share with you. I was asked to compare uh, this birthday party of a cousin of mine, a male child, a male baby, basically, and I ended up describing him as gorgeous. I mean, <laughs> so this is an example of an embarrassing situation. And I can't think of any great communication that I've done so far. And my wish list for from this course is uh, uh, driving away my stage fear and how to present. Uh, I mean, how to how to give presentations better and in and impress a lot of people. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Himanshu. I'm from Mathura, UP. I'm doing my seminar under Professor Vishwas. Uh, communication disasters that I had uh, during my college days was uh, I never look at the audience. I just say what I want to say in my presentations and all. And I do not have any success in that. And my expectations from this course are I want to be a public speaker, good public speaker. Hello everyone. I'm Mukan Lahoti. Uh, I'm from Indore. Uh, I'm doing my seminar under Professor Biswas. Uh, communication disaster was uh, when uh, once I had to give an English exemplary, I went entirely off way and I did many embarrassing things. I said many embarrassing things. Uh, uh, success was uh, my uh, BTEC uh, campus placement interview. Uh, I knew nothing about the technical things, uh, but uh, due to communication, somehow I got the job. Uh, then Regarding this, uh, the takeaways from this course, uh, I would like to learn something uh, how to handle unexpected situation when the other person is uh, angry or is not going to listen us or we know that he is lying, how, how to tackle those, uh, those situations. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Avisay Gupta. I am from Sultanpur, UP. I am uh, working under Professor S. Sudarshan. Uh, as experience of communication disaster was uh, to read few papers in course of compiler which I was not able to understand uh, and which forced me to not take that subject at my empty uh, seminar topic and uh, wish list from this course would be that uh, I would like to learn how to present good points in group discussions and uh, debate kind of situations and uh, improve my skills on public school. Thank you very much. Hello myself Mahindra Kaklij. I am from Malaga. Uh, I am doing a seminar under Professor Uday Kedkar. Uh, my disaster was uh, in tw uh, cl 12th class. Uh, we like to teach on the occasion of Teacher's Day. Uh, I was barely able to explain the things to the students. So I would like to, uh, from this course, I would like to explain the things uh, to the people and bring clarity to, do my clarity to do my communication as well as uh, face the crowd of any size. Hello everyone, I am Ashish Agrawal and I am from Odisha. I am doing my uh, seminar under Professor Varsha Apte and my biggest communication disaster was my placement interviews. I couldn't understand a thing what they were saying and it all went wrong. And uh, my expectations from this course would be a better public communication. Thank you. Good morning everyone. Uh, myself, Mayan Gupta. I am from Rajasthan. I am working with uh, Professor Viswas as a, uh, in my seminar. Uh, I have many disasters, uh, there are hardly some success. So the only success was that I was being appreciated for my project uh, presentation in my BTEC. I would expect that I lose the fear of uh, communicating large number of crowd and uh, better represent my thoughts and myself. Thank you. Hello all. My name is Sumit Kumar Sau. I am from Bhopal, MP. And I came, I, get, I got an opportunity to come here in IIT Bombay and uh, I wish I could get rid of the pit holes I've developed in my undergraduate course. And uh, about communication disasters, I do remember the recently incident here in IIT Bombay only. One of the faculty, I have, one of the faculty has uh, told me ki that uh, you are you are worth you are worthless. You cannot do anything, and we are uh, we are not able to explain anything to him. <coughs> and about uh, good communication, I have taught many students and many of my friends, and they said I am very good in uh, teaching them. That's it. Thank you. I actually don't know what I 
demand from this course but uh, i just want <laughs> i just want to enjoy with my friends hello everyone i am shubham gautam and i am from ghazibad i am doing my seminar under the guidance of professor uh, pushpa bhattacharya and one of the communication disaster was happened when i was appearing in a gd round of a company company's interview and out of the 10 there were eight girls and you may and you may know how much time will a guy will get for talk uh, for talk and present himself in front of eight girls so this was the biggest communication disaster that i uh, that i faced in my life till date and my wish list from this course to uh, handle this kind of situations and uh, to uh, and to become uh, a good presenter in front of a crowd thank you hello i am akanksha and uh, i am from chatisgarh and to tell you about uh, the best what happened okay first the worst what happened okay so i and one of my benchmates were very great friends and one day she pulled my leg and i pulled her leg and afterwards what happened we stopped communicating neither she said that she is angry neither i uh, nor i said that i am angry and we didn't talk to each other for around one and a half months then i saw her online on facebook and i felt like okay come on i should say something because okay this may be the last sentence that i am saying to her so i just wrote there best wishes for your future and then she replied me with a hi and then we started interacting okay uh, hi why were you angry i said no i was not angry why were you angry huh? she said it even i was not angry and we both were wondering we didn't talk to each other for around one and a half months and neither of us were angry wondering why the other person is angry so this is zero communication also leads to disasters huh? still we are friends and we are good friends and i don't want any of you to do that and uh, the best what happened due to my communication uh, i got a appreciable rank in gate and uh, i was called upon by one of my teachers to uh, give a good uh, to motivate students and uh, i took two lectures and uh, both of them were of one and a half hours each so i motivated many students many many students and uh, i think more than 50 students got motivated due to me and that was one of the greatest achievements i ever had thank you and uh, yeah my wish list i am very bad at negotiation so i want to know how to negotiate and i am very excited i don't know how are you going to teach us negotiation hello i am lauren uh, i am working uh, under uh, abhiram rande sir and the worst communication i had uh, like there are many but the recent one i'll tell you in the last semester only actually i i, I had two options when i was deciding like uh, with whom i should do uh, my seminar I always wanted to do my seminar with Sharad sir, but he was not replying me. And then uh, professor, professor Abhiram Nande sir offered me seminar, so uh, I was not able to decide. So I mailed him. I, I mailed Sharad sir with all my emotions and told told him that I have got bad bad grades, sir, and I cannot decide. And I I do not have confident over me. And sir, please, if you have confident over me, please mail me or reply me. And what did he reply? He said, "Go ahead with the other professor." <laughs> so i think that i shouldn't have uh, like mailed him all my sentiments or all those things uh, a good communication i can't recall uh, uh, my wish list from this course is that uh, i want to express myself more i am very bad in expressing myself uh, that's all you're doing fine yeah you're doing fine i said oh thank you <laughs> hi i am kollol i am from kolkata west bengal and uh, my communication disaster was uh, in last semester uh, one of my course seminar that was in nlp and that was so uh, totally technical and at the half of the seminar i i just saw that all the audience is almost slept including the teacher also <laughs> so <laughs> uh, so that marks was also bad that like and uh, good was that uh, when i was in company in ibm uh, my first uh, on site uh, on site talking with the client and uh, and my all the colleagues were said that it may be some hard and something but it was uh, it uh, gone well and my wish list for this uh, course is that i will able to learn uh, some cultural aspects of uh, communication that may be in uh, with different culture how we communicate and how what are the points we need to remember something like that thank you uh hello i am ajay uh i am doing my i am from mumbai and i am doing my uh seminar under professor nl sada uh the worst moment while communicating was when one of the we were giving a presentation in uh, btech and what we had ri written on the uh, sl slides were completely unordered and our teachers like completely went mad at us and the best communication was when we were uh 
uh, we had arranged a CSI uh, fest in our college and uh, we were able to get many sponsorships for it. And the, what I would like to take from this uh, course is that uh, I would like to, when I'm speaking, I would like to generate interest among the public with whom I am speaking. Hello, myself Swapnil Kaslewar. I am from Due. Uh, and I am working under Professor Kriti uh, for my seminar about the seminar disaster, about the communication disaster. <laughs> so, I, I w in the last week only, I was supposed to engage a lecture of uh, half an hour in front of 75 students. But I dismissed the class in five minutes only. So, so uh, and uh, about the communication success, all my TA meetings. And uh, specific wish list is, uh, I want to remove that fear from my mind. Uh, speaking in front of so much audience. Hello. My name is Nikhil Kumar. It's Nikhil Kumar, there is no space in between. <laughs> So uh, usually while uh, means when someone marks my attendance, they write it Nikhil Space Kumar. Yes. And uh, I'm working under the guidance of Professor Pushpak. And uh, my worst communication disaster was when uh, after 12th standard, means I got good marks. And uh, I had to, uh, means uh, they had given me some prize and I had to say something, say, uh, say a few words on the stage. And I was uh, supposed to speak in Marathi, so, and being from a convent, I was not comfortable with that. So half of the talk was in English, half of it is in, was in Marathi, and it was really bad. And uh, one uh, guy from the audience said to me that, didn't they teach you how to speak? So that was really bad. And uh, my uh, best communication uh, instance was when, uh, uh, while leaving the job at VMware, I had to hand over my work to two guys. And uh, uh, they really appreciated my sessions and they understood everything clearly. So it was really good. And uh, what I want from this course is uh, 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 when I speak to someone who doesn't know anything about my field, how can I express it, uh, explain it in a better way uh, so that he can understand it easily. And uh, like uh, I have a younger cousin who always uh, takes my phone and starts playing mobile games and so he asked me how did you develop this and what did you use so I am not, I am blank, I don't know how to explain it or whenever uh, my grandfather asks me that what are you working on right now, I am blank and I can't explain him uh, clearly, I am confused how to explain. So like uh, when we are given a somewhat different audience, how can we better explain our technical concepts? Thank you. Okay, we'll uh, stop the sessions here. But you know one thing that comes through all these things, right? People uh, have said that they want to learn better how to speak to an audience, how to pitch an idea to an audience, right? And uh, how to p communicate across cultures. You can also treat this as a culture, right? This is one culture, then you might be speaking to Japanese, American and so on. You know, my answer to this is there's been some very interesting research on communication, right? There are two aspects of communication. One is your uh, syntactic, right? How you talk, what you say. You might speak with a Marathi accent, you might speak with a, you know, Telugu accent, whatever it is, right? At the end of the day, none of that matters. At the end of the day, what really matters? What matters? You tell me. Huh? You should be able to convey your ideas. What else? What else? How well you have performed, what else? You know what the answer is to this? Right? It is the sincerity of a person who is communicating. Most of the people who are saying who had communication problems here didn't have a problem here because they are being sincere and earnest. They are trying to share an experience. Right? And you will find with in most communication across cultures, I can speak to a Japanese guy, I can speak to a European guy, I can speak to an American. As long as I'm sincere, it doesn't matter what accent I use or whether I speak loud, I speak less and this and that. My sincerity, it's very important to be sincere in whatever you're doing. If you're sincere, people don't mind you making mistakes, they don't mind you speaking with an accent, they don't mind, they are looking at the quality of the human being. 
they are responding to that, that is much more important. So don't think by being a smart aleck and by mastering the technical aspects of communication that your communication is great. Sincerity is the most important thing. Sincerity and earnestness, that goes for your seminar, it goes for your MTP, it goes for yourselves as human beings. Right? So don't pull a, so the whole moral of the story is don't try and pull a fast one on people. Let your sincerity shine through and try and come up with things that you can feel sincere about. If you feel sincerely about something, about communicating even, you'll do it well. Okay? So I'd like to leave you with that thought, which is where Badme will give you dose on ethics and this and that and the other. But again, you know, if you want to reach out to somebody, there's nothing, there's nobody who can stop you. So what I, it also means is that we need to give you opportunities in which to stand up in front of one in a friendly atmosphere here where you can make mistakes. Right? And communicate. Right? Which means that we need to work with you in smaller groups and bring out more interaction and give you folks an opportunity to stand up in front of each other. And uh, we'll figure out how that's to be done. So for the next week, you'll have your, uh, your Janta class in, uh, on Monday. And then uh, roll numbers 1 to 54 will meet here on Tuesday morning. And uh, 55 and the rest uh, we'll meet on Thursday and we'll take it from there. Then I would request you to add it to the list, right? Because this is a uh, list that I try to derive from, uh, from the Ask uh, website. So there might be names missing, so please add them to this, right? Any other questions? Okay, good. Thanks. Take care. Has everybody signed the attendance?